Hello, I'm Matthew Jarron, Museum Curator at the University of Dundee, and welcome to the latest in my series of virtual public art walks, where we'll be taking you around some of the highlights of public art and design around Dundee uh, from the comfort of your own home. And today we're in Stobswell, and this is in fact one of two videos that I'm going to be doing of Stobswell because there is so much to see there. And we're going to start here um, outside Baxter Park. Uh, unfortunately, this is of course is one part that I can't take you in using Google Street View, um, but I'll cut to some shots there. So just nestling in the trees here, you'll see the pavilion, uh, the most recognisable landmark of Baxter Park. And inside that, you will find the first piece that we want to look at, uh, which is the statue of Sir David Baxter, uh, after whom, of course, the park is named. So David Baxter was a very notable linen manufacturer, uh, owned the uh, Dens Works, and he, in 1863, gifted the land to form Baxter Park, um, originally known as the People's Park. And in honour of this, the people of Dundee decided to uh, raise money to um, erect a statue to him, uh, which originally stood outside the pavilion. Uh, and it was erected in time for the opening of the park uh, in 1863. And uh, the statue was by Sir John Steele, who was probably Scotland's leading sculptor of the day. Um, and although born in Aberdeen and based in Edinburgh, Steele had actually uh, spent much of his childhood in Dundee and so very, felt a very strong affinity with the place, which was very helpful because it meant that he could always be relied upon to knock a bit off his price. Um, so the statue, as I say, was originally outside the pavilion. Unfortunately, a combination of weather damage and vandalism meant that uh, in the 1890s, uh, it was actually taken away from the park and moved inside the safety of the Albert Institute, what's now the McManus. And it actually remained there right up until the park was uh, refurbished um, just over 10 years ago, when finally it was uh, returned to its uh, rightful home, this time uh, safely inside the pavilion. Uh, also in the park, if we just sort of head round uh, behind the uh, pavilion, round to the left, uh, there's this rather splendid mosaic uh, and that was done again as part of the whole redevelopment of the park um, uh, in 2008. Uh, and it was a community project led by Dougie Patterson and, and Teresa Lynn. OK, so we're now going to come out uh, the top end of Baxter Park onto Pitcairn Road here. And of course, here we have Morgan Academy. And there's a couple of pieces to show you here. First of all, if we just head a bit further up Pitcairn Road. right to the sort of far end of the building and just show you these pieces here. So um, this uh, extension was added on to Morgan Academy uh, in the early 1990s and to mark the completion of this in 1994 uh, these uh, wooden uh, sculptural relief panels were added. Uh, they were created by uh, the Site Insight duo, uh, Chris Biddlecombe and Chris Kelly, uh, in 1994. Uh, it's called Morgan Years, and um, it's obviously quite difficult to really see them there, so I'll cut to some other photos. Um, they did unfortunately get rather blackened uh, in the, the infamous fire, but they did survive. Um, and you'll be able to see a slightly more colourful version of them here. And um, again, it's going to be quite difficult to see from here, but uh, there's all sorts of, of nice decorative carving on the front of the building. And again, I'll cut to some uh, photos there of that. Uh, so Morgan Academy was built by the architects Peddy and Kinnear, um, and uh, the various decorations would have been added probably around 1866. Uh, so there's various dragons and other nice uh, decorative carving on it. Now, if we head down to the bottom of the grounds of Morgan Academy, just on these gateposts here, uh, so you'll be able to see this series of bronze plaques here uh, on the gateposts. And these were actually created um, to mark the reopening of the school following the fire. Uh, a series of pieces with the, the theme regeneration. 
from 2010, and they were created by pupils in the school working with the sculptor Roddy Matheson uh, and his mobile foundry. Right, so if we just head down here, now here's Nicholson's Cycle Shop, and oh, it's a rather annoying lamppost now, that's slightly better. And we have these two nice uh, blocked up windows uh, with these rather splendid ceramic pieces in them here. And these were done as part of the Open Close project in Stobswell. So I'm sure many of you will be familiar with uh, the wonderful Open Close project run by Russell Pepper, which started in the city centre, painting doorways in, in various sort of hidden little back alleys, closes, um, and then extended out to a second phase in Stobswell in 2018. Uh, most of the pieces are murals, paintings, but uh, these are kind of the odd ones out. They're ceramic pieces by Stephen Wynne Stanley, otherwise known as Toroid. Um, and uh, the Open Close project is a fantastic initiative. The Stobswell one um, was Russell working with the local Stobswell Forum, uh, with funding from the Maryfield Regeneration Forum and the NHS Community Innovation Fund. And as we go around, we'll see, we'll see various other Open Close doors um, uh, but it's also worth checking out uh, the Open Close website and indeed when you're able going on the fantastic Open Close tours as well uh, to see the rest of those. However, we are actually going to go down and look at one of the others right now. If we just head a bit further down the road here. Now, um, if we just have a look at uh, head first at room number 39 here, uh, you'll just see the door is actually open in this shot so you can't see it so clearly but I'll cut to a, a shot um, so you can see it closed. This is another of the wonderful open close doors, this one by Jen Collins. Okay, what we're now going to do is just whiz up Mains Loan as fast as we can. Uh, I wouldn't actually include this on the walking tour because it's a bit out of the way, but one of the advantages of doing this virtually is we can speed up quite dramatically. Right, now, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, this gate is partially open, so we can't get the full effect here. But uh, there's a wonderful set of, of gates here that John Gray, the City Council Public Art Officer, designed uh, with, as you can see, the uh, Tay Bridge on them. Uh, and that was done in 2009. So, oh dear, the road is closed. But let's go down it anyway. Right, so we're now heading down uh, Court Street. Right, and we're heading along Sandeman Street. And then... Down Melrose Terrace. Now, unfortunately, um, Google Street View hasn't updated this for some time. This was taken in 2014. And this big pile of rubble <laughs> that you see here uh, was a former school uh, and has now been entirely replaced by a whole lot of new, uh, whole new housing development. And in the midst of that housing development, and I was hoping I could be able to take you in on Google Street View, but clearly uh, we can't, um, there's a nice little piece just to mark the fact that there was a school on this site um, and a little place called Scholars Bray. Uh, and that was done in 2015, so just the year after this uh, Google Street View was was taken uh, by David F. Wilson and it's a lovely little two-part piece on these gateposts um, just with lots of little imagery reminding people of, of school days so uh, there's sort of a, an old school bag and uh, lots of little frogs coming out of blazer pockets and all sorts of other little details there um, it's rather nice
Okay, so sorry I couldn't show you that uh, on Street View, but um, hopefully they'll update that at some point. So let's head back out onto uh, Court Street. Here we are. Um, it no longer survives, by the way, that Co but Court Street uh, was one of the uh, places along with Wolseley Street where there were two huge great gable end murals painted in the late 1970s by uh, Bob McGilvery of the Dundee Group Artists Limited. And those are really significant pieces uh, because uh, they were really the first uh, Scottish Arts Council funded pieces of public art in Dundee and they were the first time that uh, art was created in the city as a tool for economic regeneration. And so although those particular pieces didn't last long, um, they kind of acted as a kind of a really important precursor of the really important Black Nest public art programme of the early 1980s. Now we've come along here to this little car park area and unfortunately, again, uh, Google Street View has not kept up with the times because on this back wall here, there's now a very splendid mural featuring tigers, um, which was created in two phases in 2018 and 2019 by uh, Syke, Simon Matheson. Uh, and so it's now become uh, one of the really well-known landmarks, the, the famous Stubby Tigers. OK, we're now going to head back along Don Donald Street. And um, again, I'm not sure whether this has been updated or not. I don't think it has. But on one of the walls here uh, on Manhattan Works, there's a, a little Urwali mural that's appeared um, just as an advert for the, for the garage there, uh, which I think is also by, by Psych. I'm not 100% sure, but that, um, uh, that went up in 2019. Now, just round the back of Manhattan Works here, um, and again, Google Street View is going to let me down because it's not actually going to let me uh, drive in here, but just sort of in the back there, if you can see where the cursor is, uh, is the Dundee International Women's Centre, and another of the open closed doors is on the entrance to that uh, from 2018 by Shona Inatimi. Now, uh, this building that we're just coming round here is Cleppington Primary School and if we just drive around to the other side of it, up Eliza Street, get to the front of it. Um, it's one of a number of very splendid Art Nouveau uh, school buildings that were designed by the architect W.G. Lamond, uh, this one in 1907. And in many ways this is probably the finest of them all actually. It's just an absolutely splendid piece uh, and as you'll see it's got lots of really lovely Art Nouveau decoration on it uh, and this beautiful Art Nouveau lettering here. It's really a very splendid piece of work. And just at the back of the playground um, just behind the building, again I can't show you it here, there's uh, a new mural that just went up last year based on the naturalist and environmentalist John Muir. Uh, and this was created as part of a, a John Muir Award project and it was several undertaken as part of uh, a thing called Dundee Learning in Nature, um, which received funding from Scottish Natural Heritage's Outdoor Learning in Nature Fund. And so Pammy Bennett uh, and the Arts and Communities Association uh, have worked with a huge number of pupils from I think six different local schools um, uh, to try and get them interested in, in the environment and green space uh, using John Muir as a starting point. And so there are several of these, these wonderful murals have appeared in various schools all around Dundee. Okay, let's head back down Eliza Street. And one of the great landmarks uh, of Stubbswell uh, is the Land of Cakes sign that you can see here. Um, so Wallace's Land of Cakes, a uh, very famous uh, bakery and a whole lot of chains all around Dundee. 
Uh, and I don't actually know exactly how long this sign has been here, so if anybody has information, it would be really helpful if you could let me know. Um, it's certainly been there at least since the 1980s and may well have been there for several decades before that. Um, but as I say, I don't know who did it and I don't know when it was done, so um, do let me know if you know, but it's certainly uh, one of the, the famous landmarks of, of the area. Okay, so we carry on along Eliza Street here and then on to Albert Street and just want to, uh, first of all, <laughs> point out this wee piece here. Um, so this is the former medical centre uh, and it's got this nice little mural piece here uh, called Love Scotland by uh, the artist Ian Cuthbert Imrie. And the story of this is that, um, uh, so Imrie is based in Perth and he does quite a lot of little graffiti pieces around Perth, usually without permission. And he'd actually done this piece at the back of Perth Theatre and they didn't want it. Uh, they were busy doing a big refurbishment at the time and so they ended up uh, removing it. Uh, but the Stolmswell Forum actually saw this, uh, I think they'd read about it in the papers, and invited him to come and do it officially uh, on the building here. And in fact, it has since been renamed the Scotty Centre uh, because of the wee dog, which is quite nice, I think. Oh, another thing to just mention, actually, while we're here, this is the single most ubiquitous piece of public art in Dundee. Uh, there, there are more of these than any other artwork in the city. Um, it was designed by the artist David F. Wilson uh, in, I think, 1995. Um, and it was originally created in the city centre and, and David did all of the various street furniture designs for uh, the High Street and Murraygate and the various uh, parts of the city centre around there. And as part of that, they did this initiative called Dundee Blossoms, where uh, local businesses were able to buy a copy of this little uh, flower basket that, that David designed. Um, and uh, I think it was very cheap. And then the council would basically keep it maintained with flowers for a year for free. And so you see them all over the place uh, because loads of people wanted to have these and wanted to have their flowers. Uh, but of course, after the year was up, the council stopped maintaining the flowers. And unfortunately, although the flower baskets are still there, very few places actually still have flowers in them and still look after them. So mostly you just see them sitting empty like this one, sadly. But there are dozens and dozens of them all over the place. Uh, and they're really nicely designed actually. Now, uh, just want to quickly uh, pop along to the back of the uh, medical centre because, as you'll see, uh, there's another uh, quite comical mural here uh, of a very happy looking patient being uh, taken in to see the doctors. Um, now, I'm not exactly sure when this was done. It's, it's a youth project uh, from, I think, the, the, the late 1990s. I don't know who the artists were. There's very similar style of art in murals on the uh, Grey Lodge settlement, um, which you can see on my Hilltown tour. So it may well be the same, uh, same young people were involved in, in creating that. Uh, I'm not sure. Anyway, um, there is a plan to have a much larger mural appearing in Cardine Street, um, which I think was meant to be happening uh, this year, but obviously with everything that's gone on, that's obviously been delayed. So when that will happen, I don't know, but hopefully fairly soon. Uh, now, I'm just going to cross over the road here. And here's another nice little uh, mural outside the laundromat, uh, this pet grooming place. Uh, so this was done by John Fraser uh, in 2015. Uh, now we're just going to head down Albert Street, just briefly, because we're then going to turn around and ah, no. uh, you'll just see half of it in the picture here. Um, this was the original Open Close mural that was created uh, by an artist called Rob Ross Hasty uh, in 2018. Uh, and it's a text-based piece. And it's a quotation from a, a Norwegian called Christian Lulange, who is a political scientist, historian and Nobel Peace Prize winner. Um, however, that didn't stop it uh, getting vandalised very quickly, uh, literally just a few months after it went up. And this was then um, painted over with a different design, which is what you can see now, and I'll cut to a photo of it here, uh, which is this very splendid portrait of Ethel Moorhead. 
Uh, Moorhead was uh, an artist but also very prominent suffragette and um, among other things she was the first woman to be force-fed in a Scottish prison uh, and she is believed to have been one of the women uh, involved in the, the famous arson attack on Robert Burns's cottage. Anyway, uh, wonderful to have her celebrated here. This is uh, by Michael Corr and hopefully it'll last a bit longer. It has actually been covered with some special anti-graffiti uh, uh, varnish, so hopefully <laughs> uh, it won't get uh, vandalised. Right, um, now we're just going to head along Park Avenue. Uh, I just want to point out this piece coming up, which <laughs> interestingly, uh, again, is another one that, that has changed over time. And so in this shot, we can actually see the uh, the original version, uh, which you can still see there. But then when I actually drive up to it, look, it magically changes <laughs> into the new one. It's like we've travelled in time, isn't that amazing? Uh, so let's just turn around. Uh, so this is the current version uh, here. Uh, this is another one by Psyche. Um, and this went up in 2019, uh, but it replaced an earlier one that was done in 2016. Uh, which I'll show you as well. Right, okay, well that's our last piece uh, to look at in this first part of the Stobswell tour, because here we are back at Baxter Park where we started. So uh, that's it for part one, uh, but do join me for uh, part two of our Stobswell tour where we'll see lots more fantastic art. Okay, bye for now.